Hi, I'm Susan Kennard and you found The Spiritual Awakener. This is where you will hear people talk about their incredible stories of spiritual awakening and how they have found a way to help others. So be in service really for the collective. You are going to find many healers on this subject, on this podcast, and just be open to thinking about other ways of healing. So I'm really excited to be here today and I have an amazing person and I can't wait to interview her about her story and how she helps the collective. Her name is Kim Shirello. I got that right, Kim, didn't I? Shirello, yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you for being you. here on the Spiritual Podcast. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here, Susan. I'm excited for our chat. <laughs> Great. So you've got, you had a really interesting job and a lot of people will be very interested in this. Where did you work before? What was your profession? I was an aerospace engineer working on a payload for the space shuttle with NASA. Yeah. And what does that mean <laughs> 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 to the lay person like me? What does that mean? <laughs> well, um, so uh, on the space shuttle, you had the astronauts that would fly the space shuttle. Um, and they have, if anyone's ever seen the inside of the space shuttle, they have a payload bay. And people would, people, companies, uh, would pay to put their payload on the space shuttle to do experiments of what is it like in space. And our particular wow. payload was testing the effects of um, zero gravity on cells and how wow. these cells react. So we needed to um, feed the cells and keep them warm yeah. and cool enough and um, make sure they were alive and, and then get all the information back when the space shuttle landed um, to, to get more understanding about um, the impact on humans on a cellular level wow. uh, in yeah. zero gravity. So pretty exciting stuff. It's really exciting stuff and it's very scientific. And as you know, my background is science as well. So it's great that we've come together, me as a spiritual scientist and you definitely as a spiritual scientist. <laughs> and we and and it's ironic as well, because the next part of the story, you know, you're going to talk to us about what actually really happened. But when we're thinking about the cells, you're really going to be talking about how that actually led you to actually understand that you could heal yourself. So what happened? So when I was an engineer, I was a, a complete engineer. So I, I believed that if you can't prove it, it's not real, it's not true. I so hear I, you with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't believe in anything spiritual and um, because you couldn't prove it. And I thought, yeah. and, and I used to say people who believed in that were insane and were um, loons, <laughs> yeah. and all those words. And um, then I started having health issues, um, yeah. severe health issues, where um, uh, one of the possibilities of my symptoms was that mm. I potentially had a brain tumor. Wow. Between death. Yeah. And um, so I started- Great wake up call, right? Yeah, really, really. Mm. And I started going and uh, I started going from one specialist, a medical specialist to another, to another. Mm. And they kept saying, no, you're fine here. No, you're fine here. And wow. finally went to the neurologist and they said, no, you don't have a brain cancer. Um, and we don't know what's wrong with you. And all the while, this was months and months and mm. months of seeing specialists, my symptoms were getting worse. Wow. And they mm. finally got to the point where they said, um, well, you don't have anything that we know of. And um, so let's just wait and see. And I said, what do yeah. you mean? And they said, wow. well, why don't you, we'll have another brain scan in one year with the neurologist to check to see if you have brain cancer. Mm. And uh, otherwise, and if your symptoms get worse, come see us again. But they had no idea. And at that point, um, I, I really felt that I was going to die. Wow. That they didn't know yeah. what was wrong with me and they yeah. weren't going to figure it out and I was going to die before they figured it out. Yeah. And, yeah. And it, Did you and feel it, they'd made a mistake? Did you think, you know, that, oh, they must have made a mistake or missed something because you felt so ill, huh? 
Right. That's and, not and well. You know, I, I, I figured that they just didn't send me to the right specialist. Yeah. They, yeah. Didn't, they weren't finding the cause of my symptoms. And, and also I, they weren't like, finding, you know, for you, it was like, I'm looking outside of myself for something to fix me. Great segue, huh? And, you know, I'm looking outside of myself for someone to fix me. Which right. obviously, you know, um, when we're looking at ourselves, we are our own healer, right? But we know that, but you only know that through experiencing what you experienced. So go ahead. Yeah. 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 And, and for those of, uh, of those of your audience that follow astrology, I was 27 me, at the time. Me, 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 yes, me. There we go. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, was, I was 27 at the time, so I was going through my Saturn return. Oh, and wow. Saturn gets yeah. you, you're off your life path. It, it gets you on your life path. Wow. So yes. at that time, um, it, it was interesting that, right, you were saying I'm looking outside of myself yeah. to the doctors to tell me what is going wrong and looking for a scientific proof. Yeah. And even though they told me I was fine, yeah. I didn't believe them. My, you know, I've had intuition my whole life, but my family would say, how do you know such things? Do you have proof? So I just yeah. stopped saying stuff. But at the time, yes. I, was like, I know something's wrong. Yeah. And I know they're wrong saying I'm fine. Yeah. And you know what? I, I really believe I'm going to die. Yeah. And so I should know what is the meaning of life and what's my purpose in life? And yeah. I don't have answers and I need to go start finding answers. And that was your key. Yeah. The purpose, huh? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So in, in the, sh the short, it's, it's a long story, but the short, yeah. it's a fun story, but the yeah. short story <laughs> is uh, that I ended up uh, going to a spiritual class thinking, yeah. I don't believe in it, but there's nothing for me to lose here. And mm. I really think that I'm going to, you know, it was an all day workshop. And I really think I'm just going to leave the workshop saying that this is <laughs> insane. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm leaving. Yeah. And uh, not only did I not leave the workshop, I stayed for the entire day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and of then, course. And then the teacher said, you know what? Part two of the workshop uh, has one opening in it and it's coming up in the next week. Are you interested in attending? And I just kind of like had an out of body experience hearing myself. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> Even it was your soul going, yeah, this is exactly in alignment with what I need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it ended yeah. up that that particular uh, spiritual teacher and her teachings mm. gave me the tools that I needed yeah. to find my own answers as to the purpose of life. Oh, amazing. And yeah. my purpose in life. Yeah. So do you think that what was happening then with you whilst you were, and this happens a lot with people. So whilst you're doing the job <laughs> and, and for the purpose of um, listening to the podcast later and not seeing the video, I've got my fingers up in inverted commas, because mm -hmm. when we are doing a job, it could be that that job is not really our soul's mission and our soul's purpose, but we didn't listen and we didn't listen and we didn't listen. So our body, this is my opinion, our body had to show us a message so that we actually did listen. And that's obviously what happened with you. The symptoms were really dramatic. You couldn't have got them perhaps more dramatic, could you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you definitely had to listen, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. So, yeah. You know, when all Saturn returns is, yeah. right, if you're off your path, the universe spirit is going to get you on your path really yes. quickly. And I would have never considered uh, taking a spiritual class ever, ever. Yeah. I wouldn't have looked yeah. into them. I wouldn't have read a spiritual book. I wouldn't have done yeah. anything. And so super thankful that um, I didn't have to search through multiple different um, spiritual paths. Yeah. Uh, immediately found my path you were pinpointed in the right direction in like yeah. instantly yeah fine tuned and yeah it, it's super empowering so mm. it's now my my goal in life is to teach people how to ha teach the people the skills that i've learned yeah. so that they can go heal themselves and they can find their purpose on the planet and it's their perfect purpose. And I think the key there as well um, for everybody listening is 
that it's about you being your own inner healer. And those of you that know me, that's the way I speak. This is my language. And so we share a real common language here together. This is yes. probably why we resonated so well, is that we, there is not a healer on the planet that can heal you because you are your own healer. And it's with the tools that you can gather together and, and meet lots of different people that are channels for healing, like him, like myself, like others, can give you those tools so that you can actually find your purpose, your mission and align with it. And that's the key, isn't it? Definitely. And responsibility. I, I, yeah. I, I agree. Um, no one can heal anyone else. And as an intuitive energy healing facilitator, I say facilitate the healing, right? Mm -hmm. I've studied and honed skills to yeah. help with energy healing so that, you know, for example, if you wanted to go to have heart surgery, you're not going to go to your local food store and ask the grocer to do heart surgery on you. That's and you're perfect. not even going to yeah. go to your, your general family doctor either you yeah. want to go to a heart surgeon who yes. specializes in that and you know that's what susan and i do we specialize and we yeah. can pinpoint in and focus more quickly to help facilitate and you really see it as well so energetically that. see it can't we so yeah. you know we can we can really see in somebody and feel in somebody what where the trauma is whether you know i specialize in trauma so i see where the trauma is what do you see when you see with people what is it that you are looking at right so i i energetically um i'm um, focusing on the physical body mental emotional and spiritual bodies and mm -hmm. physical body starting as low as the dna level because sometimes yeah. energetic blockages are there mm -hmm. and sometimes we have physical symptoms but the energetic blockage is in our energy field or if course, like yeah, yeah. aura. Yeah. So um, wanting yeah. to sense all of that, me in particular, my uh, intuitive abilities that I've really honed are clairsentience, which is the mm -hmm. knowingness, uh, clairvoyance, which is seeing, mm -hmm. um, and empathic, when I say that, I mean feeling other people's emotions. Yes. Mm. Um, kinesthetic, which is feeling what people feel physically. So when people say I have uh, pain in my neck, I can tell you like, oh, it starts behind your right ear. It goes down the side of your neck and yeah. into the top of your shoulder, right? Uh, You're being given it, right? Be able to pinpoint where yeah. they're where they're feeling it. Uh, yeah. So and I'm also a medium, so I can communicate with people who have um, who have transitioned or more commonly known as died. Uh, left their yeah. body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're so similar. You know, it's really interesting because it's. And I think that what goes with being um, somebody who helps facilitate people to heal is quite often that there are many layers of connecting with guides. So we either, you know, we have our guides, we have galactic, obviously guides, and I expect you are connected with those as well, being, you know, to do with your space, <laughs> and probably very alien uh, yourself maybe, <laughs> but you know, bringing in those different vibrations. And of course, mediumship is, is on one vibration, and uh, galactic uh, multi-dimensions is on another and psychic ability is on another isn't it so it's incorporating all those different energies and different levels of vibration to whatever that person needs would you say whatever that person yeah. needs yeah I i'm glad you said that because so what i do is i connect with my higher self soul and have my higher self soul talk communicate with the client's higher yeah. self soul as to what is the highest plan for our session yeah. today? What do I need Perfect. to be aware of? What is it the highest plan for me to help facilitate healing? Yeah. Um, when clients realize how intuitive I am, they get a little nervous and they say, are you, you know, digging into my psyche and finding out all my dark deep secrets? And I say, no, I mean, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Like I call that psychic yeah. borderism and I won't do yeah. that. You don't need to. That is being in alignment and in integrity. So, and of course, you know, like I but say, people, say, why would you? I have opinions on what to do yeah. and, and whatnot, but that yeah. doesn't matter. What only yeah. matters is what your soul is guiding us for this session because your higher self soul knows 
the most joy-filled, ease-filled, love-filled path yeah. forward for you. And and what thread for us to pull to un, untangle the, the the ball of of yarn um, of, <laughs> of 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 the energetic blockages, right? What's the mm. most effective path forward? So let's let's look at that and. And when you say everything is energy, everything is energy. That's why we work, when we work with energy, we're working on physical issues, mental issues, emotional issues, yeah. spiritual issues, and, and through all, all lifetimes too, right? So mm. a lot of times an issue can be, even if it's a physical issue, it can be an unresolved issue from another lifetime. And That's I right. use the word another lifetime because past, present, and future are happening at the same time. Same time, exactly. Right? Yeah. So all the lifetimes are happening at the same time. So something that hasn't been healed in another lifetime is here for you in this lifetime to be healed. And things <laughs> that you've learned in other lifetimes are here yeah. this lifetime that you already know. Yeah, so you're just bringing the memory back in, aren't you? You're just bringing the memory back in and just remembering all those gifts from other planets like Atlantis or whatever lifetime you might have had. And definitely in this lifetime, don't you find that, I mean, the people that I definitely attract are people that are very, very conscious and I feel very blessed with that. But also I'm noticing that many, many people are turning to realizing that their mission has, hasn't been fulfilled yet. And they've realized that they're supposed to be doing something so, so different. You know, my mental program, my spiritual gifts mental program, people are ready. They're quitting jobs. They're doing this. I don't advise that, by the way. But people are quitting jobs and they are doing things like that because they realize that their soul knows so much more and is so ready to really be that light for the collective. And, you know, and would you say, Kim, I mean, I definitely for myself, I don't work. Do you? I have fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Service. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not like going to work, is it? It's, it's, yeah. it's, and that I think is the real key when you know that you are in alignment with your soul's mission. Like everyone's here, the same purpose to love and serve people and to serve themselves and love themselves, I believe. But to actually get up in the morning and say, oh, I have to go to work, then you know that that is not your soul's mission, huh? That's a real good barometer, I think. And yeah. if your body well, shows a message like yours did, that's another well, massive barometer. <laughs> Isn't it, right? Definitely. Yeah. Spirit, spirit will guide us on our path. And right, we are spiritual beings. So everything is spiritual learning for us. Some mm -hmm. learning is more challenging and more uncomfortable than others, right? If you're having yeah. that that job that you're dreading to go to every day. Mm. Mm. Um, and there's still and, learning in it, right? There's still and, learning. There's relationship yeah. learning in that. There's, but you know what? I'm being guided to ask you and take you back to, if that's okay. These are my guides chipping in. Um, for the listeners, because a lot of people would, I feel would like to know this. How long did it take for you to notice that your body was no longer showing the messages? That's how I word it. So the body shows a message. It's the barometer, isn't it? So how long was it after you stepped onto your spiritual path? I think this is going to really help people. So how long was it for you? You mean to hear my physical symptoms? To just, yeah, to just notice that your physical symptoms yeah. were changing. What well, did I you... was consciously working to heal them. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember. It was probably on the order of, Mm, I'd say a, a couple months, maybe. Yeah. Wow. Pretty, pretty so just cool. to notice. Yeah. So just to notice. So stepping onto the path, acknowledging that your that was not your mission. Like right. that's okay. That was part of who I was, but this is more who I am. This is more who I'm meant to be in the world. And then something shifted because the body did not have to shout at you is that right you know right. so people listening if their body is shouting at them it doesn't mean they don't go and see a doctor does it it means that they work alongside the medical model and the um spiritual model if that's what they choose and if they're listening to this kim they must be open and that's fantastic or someone's sent it to them or shared it with them that they might might find it helpful the universe has a fab way of doing that but so it is possible if people have 
had an experience like you or any experience with their body, it's absolutely possible to heal yourself, isn't it? Yes. Absolutely. And we yes, really exactly. stand on that, don't we? Mm. And, and, and it, it, it's a process. So I, I'll use myself as an example is after I woke up spiritually and, mm. and healed those issues that mm. uh, made, made the medical community feel like I had a brain tumor, um, I decided like, well, there's more I want to heal. And I had severe allergies at the time. So I decided, and I was going, um, I was going to the doctor once a week for allergy shots. I was taking three allergy medicines every day. Wow. And Mm. so, so like you said, I didn't stop all of that. I started working working on my healing Mm. and eventually, um, I forget the, I forget the order of things because it was, oh, yeah. uh, almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, uh, but, wow. uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I, 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 I would check in every day and it was, yeah. it, it's, it was like, okay, now you only have to take two medicines. Yes, exactly. Right. Now, this is a real key, isn't it? So you right. listened you to, to, did you use kinesiology? I know that's something that's really helpful, but you can just check in. Yeah, him, so I, I teach my students how to connect directly to your higher self soul versus yeah. um, using kin- kinesiology, which is yeah. a good stepping stone in learning yeah. your intuition abilities. Perfect. Yeah. Definitely. But it, so it was like a, it was like okay, and now you only need to have one allergy medicine a day. Now yeah. you don't have to have Perfect. any allergy medicines a day. Now you don't have to go for your weekly allergy shots. And please understand, I had such severe allergies that I had to carry around. Uh, what in the United States is called an EpiPen. Yeah. It's oh yeah, needle. we have them here too in the UK. Yeah, so yeah. I had mm-hmm. to carry that around. Wow. I could have a reaction such that I needed to give myself the injection mm. and get to the hospital immediately. Mm. So I had very severe allergies. Wow. Um, so again, and that mm. again, that only took probably a couple of months as well of focusing mm. on getting clear of what are the reasons and the causes yes. that I'm creating yeah. that in my life. What do I need to learn? What yes. false beliefs or limiting beliefs do I have? Yes, exactly. And let's heal them. So let's take it in steps. And with clients, we do the same. Yes. Right? We take it in steps as to... You, Empowering you know, steps with responsibility. Take right. and uh, What I'm hearing really from this, and it's a big theme at the moment with this uh, Pluto-Saturn conjunction, with taking responsibility for what we've brought in to this lifetime to heal at this time. So really taking responsibility, isn't it? And, and stepping through it and saying, you know what, it's okay. It doesn't define me and I can heal whatever comes up. And it's layers and layers, isn't it? Layers and layers of, exactly. you know, these And taking those steps versus cold turkey saying, I'm not going to the doctor anymore. I'm not yeah. taking my medicines anymore. Yeah. That could be too much too fast too soon. Um, yes. And too, too many things to heal at one time where you could go into exactly. a healing crisis or, you know, depending on your medicines and your medical conditions, you could die. So yeah. we want to take it, we want to take it step by step. And, and that's a really good advice for people actually, because you know, sometimes we might hear, and we do sometimes hear this where people say, Oh, just stop taking your medication. You shouldn't be taking medication. It's, you know, but if you believe that that medication is going to help you and support you and it gets you through your day, why wouldn't you, if you believe it, if you don't believe it and it doesn't resonate with you and you're taking it because someone told you to and you don't feel right about it, then it's probably not going to help you vibrationally or energetically. But if you feel it helps you, it's really important, isn't it? You know, it's super yeah. important. And mm. if you go off your medicine and you start having symptoms, you want to get back on your medicine. Yeah. And, and you're, you're making me think of something else that I suggest Good. to people as they're um, working through this process is, yeah. okay, you're taking your daily medicine and yeah. you put, put, put your medicine, not the whole bottle, but just mm. the dosage you're taking at that point in time. Mm. Um, if, if it's a, a pill form or a capsule form, put it in your hands. And, and cup, I'm going to, for the video people, I'm showing them cupping my hands around yeah. the, the, the pills. And you want to say, you want to ask the universe or spirit or God, goddess or Allah, whoever you who talk to, ask mm. to, to raise this medicine to the highest vibration 
to yeah. heal and transmute all the negative side effects of the medicine because we all know medicines have negative That's side beautiful. effects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and just take a moment, take a couple of slow breaths, allow that yeah. to happen and then take your medicine. And seeing it as an, you know, one of the things I, I do that's beautiful with um, chemotherapy or something to do with uh, cancer medication or anything is to get them to imagine a beautiful silver white light, which is healing coming into their body or the pills that they take are pure healing energy. So very similar. And so that's really good. Um, so people can take that away. And there, there will be people listening to this that take medication and that's fine. And for them to realize that everything is energy again, and that we can shift that consciousness of that energy of anything. So water is a really good, I'm being reminded here of, of the water experiment. Um, emoji, is it emoji or mojo? Or something? <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah. and, you know, talking to water with love, talking to water with hate, and what happened to the water, it went stagnant, right? So we can talk to and really send energy into anything that we're putting into our body with pure unconditional love, can't we? And the same as the water we drink. So if we have to drink water with pills or we have to mix something in with water, then we're sending that love. And it really is pure unconditional love, isn't it? That we're sending in when we're sending light. So that's really important for people to hear i feel right and i love giving people action step action yeah. steps and that they can take today right yes. small, we take small steps and the small steps add up to big steps and just Perfect. like you're saying we can um send love energy to the water and mm -hmm. in addition to our medicine we can do it to our food and why mm -hmm. wouldn't that for all the food we're eating right yeah. to have it be at the highest vibration to really nourish us on every level of our being. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, that's helping with being more conscious and more present and more mindful. There's just... Mm -hmm. there's so and we can just set the intention for that. You know, just before yeah. I came on this call, we were doing an intention for global healing. And um, it, my guides were saying to me whilst we were doing it, was just set the intention, the intention is set. So it's almost like just setting the intention and it is done. Ask and it is given. You know, and this is what I hear from my guides all the time. Ask and it is given. So the fact that we're talking about this today and people are going to listen to this, they're going to realize, wow, yeah, it's so simple. Right. And it doesn't have to get complicated, does it? And I think sometimes if you're feeling unwell, if you've got a physical message in your body, it feels so overwhelming sometimes to think that you can ever get out of that pain. You can ever change something about your body but 100 percent just little steps you can and then those little steps you become less overwhelmed because you have something that you can do yourself yeah because there's going to be some people listening to this that perhaps have something you know just been diagnosed or have got a big message in their body and it's really hard enough for them to get out of bed so it is just these little steps i think which is Brilliant that this has come up in this interview today because I think it's really important for people. So, Kim, how can people get hold of you if they're really they really want to contact you, and what can you offer them? Yes, thank you. So, people can contact me through my website, which is bethechangenow.com. I love that. That's bethechangenow.com. So that's from Gandhi's quote: "Be the change you wish to see in the world." And I added the word now, be the change now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Take your action steps every day, Perfect. however little they are. Mm -hmm. And um, on my website, you will have an, uh, an option of mm -hmm. uh, choosing to have a free discovery session with me for 20 minutes that I Perfect. offer to everyone to answer your questions and to um, see how I can be of service and share with you. That's so. brilliant. And you run, I know that you run, you do private sessions. Yeah. And you do, you run lots of different workshops and lots of different subjects with, they can find all of that on your website. Um, on yes. Website? All of that is listed on my website. My private sessions are by phone or by zoom. So I do have clients around the world. And um, sometimes people say like, how can sessions work by phone? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Um, I, use, I use the example of, uh, well, I'll use two examples. One is 
um, a lot of people have heard the story of someone is going for surgery and everyone in that church or in that synagogue uh, mm -hmm. go, go to the church to pray for that person while the surgery is going on. And yeah. the story always goes that the surgeon comes out of surgery and says, what happened? This was the best surgery. It was, <laughs> this was the most successful. What happened? And what happened was everyone was praying. Were they in the hospital? No. Were they in the surgical room? No. Exactly. They were in another building and they were yeah. focusing their energy, like you were saying, their intent. Yeah. And, and so then Susan and I, as energy healers, we can focus even more so than a prayer. Mm. And um, pinpoint, I also pinpoint, we can pinpoint. Healing, so I can actually see the person wherever they are in the world and, yeah. and see what, what we need to, to work on. And, and again, be, be the very specific. And for people who are unsure of it, that's what this discovery session is for. So yeah. you can actually see it and sense it. In my sessions, I always have to tell people, on my phone sessions, Zoom sessions, I have to tell people, okay, I have my hands on your head, or I'm moving my hands to your shoulders, because people will feel my hands. And sometimes yeah. I forget because I get so into what I'm doing, and, and, and the client will say, I feel someone's hands on my knees oh, and it, it yeah. hurt. And I'm like, so oh, I special. moved your knees and I forgot to tell you. Tell you. <laughs> and they have to look down and check that there's nobody there, right? right? And this is, and just to explain that this is, you know, obviously it's not you, but it's your guides working through you and with you and your energy being transferred to that person so that your whole. I mean, what I'm hearing from my guides, the whole heart and soul of you and all your guides and their guides working together as well. So they get this incredible triple whammy <laughs> of energy healing that, that they needed. And it was all set up beforehand anyway. So if somebody calls you now, they're listening to this, they love your energy, they really want to explore something with you they it's already you know the guides have already decided that this is the person so if you feel that you're listening to this and you feel it and you feel a resonance with kim then please go ahead and go onto a website say the website again be the change now.com yeah be the change now.com and also facebook yeah is that your name or is that be the change.com have you got a facebook I actually don't do Facebook. Okay, that's fine. Do you do LinkedIn? You, anyway, no, you do I some have, social. Media. Yeah, so on my, on my website, on the main mm -hmm. page, you can yeah. join my um, email newsletter. You can Perfect. join me on my YouTube channel. I have uh, lots of free videos there. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and I also blog once in a while. So I give a lot yeah. of free information because I want to yeah. empower people on how they can heal themselves on their spiritual journey, growing physically, mentally, physically, spiritual in this lifetime. That's the yeah. most important thing. And that's what my workshops are about is, um, as, as we were talking before, the saying goes, God's truth is simple, but not necessarily easy, yeah. <laughs> right? So we teach you the simple tools and then your, your challenge You're on your way. is to hone those skills throughout the rest of your path. Yeah. Right. And, and, it's, and, and it's not getting it done, is it? It's not saying, um, you know, I was having a conversation with, with somebody the other day and, I, and they were saying, oh, well, this, this is the thing. And I'm like, actually, there is no thing. There is no holy grail. You are the holy grail. And you just choose and feel resonance with certain people and certain processes and tools so that you can find your own holy grail. And, and so it's, you know, it's not about having one thing. And sometimes people will work with a channel of light for a period of time, and then they'll feel a resonance to work with another channel of light that does something different. And I think that that is really fabulous, isn't it? That we can just choose and feel with empowerment what feels right. Yes, well, and, and uh, the Buddhists have a great saying that all paths lead to the Buddha, not meaning Buddha himself, but meaning mm. all paths are leading to the same place, to our yes. spiritual growth, to our spiritual enlightenment. And mm. it's you, you honoring your own intuition as to what path is working for you right now. Exactly. Right? What workshop might be helpful? What uh, uh, intuitive energy healing facilitator might be helpful? What channel might be helpful? 
Mm. and you learning and what book or whatever you know whatever whatever thing that somebody wants to read because because some people don't do social media do they they don't do social media but they might be listening to this in their car and driving along you know listening to to a podcast and thinking wow yeah actually that's so true sometimes I prefer that sometimes I prefer to listen and of course listening to these podcasts allow people to open their consciousness at the same time and obviously we appreciate that we don't want people to close their eyes um, and listen too deeply when they're driving <laughs> correct but thank you so much Kim you were making me think of one one more quick thing that I'm yeah, sure, sure. You, you share with your folks as well is that growing on your spiritual path doesn't mean you need to do what what I do or what Susan does exactly right? Yeah. People are, you know, I lived in the spiritual town of Crestone, Colorado for a while and people there are pick, they pick the gardener because that gardener has a spiritual path. It might not be the same one as, as the homeowner, Amazing. but that's why they pick them. They pick the plumber because the plumber has that, that spiritual path. They yeah. pick the, the pet sitter because the pet, yeah. right. And so we need people you know, people say, Kim, I don't want to do what you do. I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> and yeah, I said, it's not what I want. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We need nurses and doctors and lawyers yeah. and, and plumbers and electricians and uh, teachers. We need every walk of life working on growing spiritually. And people yes. choose you because of that. Exactly. And, you know, and we don't know, do we, where, you know, where somebody may have decided to be that gardener and really tend for Mother Earth or the one that looks after animals, really choosing to work with the animal kingdom. You know, we just don't know. And we can't make everybody sit and channel light language, right, for example, because that isn't what they're meant to be doing. But what they're meant to be doing is what they're meant to be doing. I love that. That's absolutely perfect. And that really opens the door as well, that, you know, whatever people want to do to heal themselves, it doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be a medium. And it doesn't mean they're necessarily going to be a, a channel for those to heal. But they do yeah. it in their own way. I mean, my, my clients that. range from people who are fundamentalist in their religion all to lawyers to electricians i even have mm. a client that is um a stripper yeah uh i don't know what it's called in the uk but uh, it's called a stripper okay yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. right and yeah. and i have clients who actually have their own uh practices being yeah. an intuitive uh, being an energy healing facilitator around the yeah. world who are wanting to take their abilities and therefore their businesses to the next level so they can help their clients even more. It's knowing in divine humility that we are yeah. all works in progress, even ascended masters and angels and whatever yeah. words you want to use. If you ask them, are you still working on your healing? They say yes, every day. <laughs> and we help them, right? We help them by showing up and asking for help, right? So we, we help them with their journey. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks so much for being here, Kim. Thank you so much. We got it together. We managed to connect. It was brilliant. It was divine timing. And uh, so for those of you listening, thank you so much for coming on to the, to the Spiritual Awakener. I'm so excited to have my amazing guests. You can find me on susankennard.co.uk please send me an email. Let me know what you thought of the podcast. I'd love to hear. And if you want to come on, if you've got a beautiful spiritual awakening story, just like Kim and just like myself, then please do contact me at susan at susankennard.co.uk. Much love to you all. Thank you so much. And thank you again, Kim. Thank you.